years, but I never did. I never did take the time to learn it. I didn't figure out who you were. How do you say echo three dots? Three dots? Uh, three dots? No, three dots. And uh, two dots, three dots. Say O is uh, it's uh, uh, S three dots, O two dots, S is three dots. The uh, last I started in twice to learn the last in, learn the station H to be a station agent. Uh, the third time. I started in, well, I'm not finished up. And in 1931, I went to Concord, Texas. Went to work for the railroad. What was Houston like for a long time ago? Well, the, when I was down here, for four years now, there wasn't the thing there that, that's the garage that I worked in, the Metlo Garage. Was a, used to be the old city order farm, opera house. Mm-hmm. And about 20, 19, 28, and 9, somewhere along there. I don't remember just when, but in somewhere along that time, and uh, I, uh, there was a federal land bank right there on Lamar across from uh, Lamar and Main right across from the Lamar Hotel and then it was the old Metlo garage that was the old city order coin where we had the garage and then Western Auto had a little Western Auto store some other little store there and that was then on Dallas Main. What that auditorium was? Where Foley's is right now, where their front door comes out. Right the Well, it was an old city order store. The city had quit using it, and they was, uh, I don't know whether someone had bought it or what. Anyway, we had a garage, parking lot garage. Right huh? Right by it? No, in the building. It still had all the old balconies, uh, the old balconies and all the up there. And the dressing rooms and where they handle their lights and everything. All they did was just tear the, the bottom part out of it where they could park all the cars in there. And the, uh, um, those old Umbo building was quite, there wasn't anything beyond that other than that I can remember, other than Rice Institute and uh, the Warwick Hotel, they were out in the country at that time. I was parking in the main street as far as the business was concerned. And uh, it wasn't, I could walk from there out to the other end of, of uh, across the north main borough. Out there, I used to go out there one time I was down here. I went out there every day for a week so I get on working for the Gulf Oil Company. And I would I'd have maybe a dime in the morning and I, I'd have to make my choice between Drinking a cup of coffee and eating a hot dog, eating a donut, or and walking out there, or riding a streetcar to do without my breakfast. So I didn't wind up eating and walking out there. Took about, uh, I guess, 25, maybe 30 minutes to walk out there. And walk back. There's a lot of good exercise. Uh, get a cup of coffee, donuts for a dime. They were bread, big donuts, big cups of coffee. Well, 
Well, it's over on the, on the counter, like we do now. But, uh, and, uh, after I went to work for the railroad, I worked at Scott Coy. I worked at, uh, at uh, Hubbard.
superintendent told the chief over there to work me as long as he could. So I worked there six months and 19 days, and they was fixing to transfer me up into the Longview district. Meantime, the railroad, I had to either come back to the railroad or give up my seniority. So I come back to the railroad and went to Singleton. I went to work. That's where that's your time accumulated, years accumulated. If you went to work like today, and I went to work tomorrow, you would have a one day seniority on it. So I get a job? Yeah, if you, any job that come open that you wanted, you'd have the right to the job before I would. I worked on it. And I went on to walk to Hatchet. Then I moved to Tig. In, fe in uh, February 1943. And uh, started to promote it to a dispatcher in 1946. And worked there on January the 23rd, 1969. I mean, uh, yeah, 69, and they transferred me to, to Fort Worth. And worked there until June, so June the 1st, 1976. Quit. Retired. And that's it. What about all your kids? All of my kids. Well, Tommy was born in the section house at uh, at Putman. Her, his granddaddy Luca, your great granddad Luca, was a section farmer. He was a section guy, and he lived in the section house there when he was living there when Tommy was born. On say on uh, October the twenty ninth, nineteen hundred. 33. And then uh, when uh, Patricia, Aunt Patricia was born, she was born in Jan uh, January the 10th, 1936. They had bought them a place, moved out of the section house. Uncle David was born at Singleton, Texas, February the 27th, 1939, and your mother was born at Waxahachie, Texas, September the 8th, 1942, and uh, Aunt Connie was born. May the 12th, 1951. Uncle Paul was born August the 2nd, 1962. Two. 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 They were the only ones of our children born in the hospital. Paul, Connie, and Paul. And uh, your mother would have been born in the hospital, walked past you, but the doctor that was uh, supposed to be there, he was on vacation. And the doctor that, uh, that, that delivered your mother was, uh, we couldn't get. In the hospital, they had people stacked down in the hall at the hospital. And what was his name? Dr. Hastings. Was the one. Dr. Jenkins was the one that was supposed to be in there. And he, was, he said he would make arrangements at the hospital and all when your mother was due. 
But he was on vacation and he hadn't told uh, Dr. Hastings. He told him he had one or two other people that were expecting baby. That they were expecting them. They had, he'd already told them about them, but your mother, they wasn't, he wasn't expecting her and she was the only one who was born while he was on vacation. And Dr. Hastings just brought his nurse out to our house. Dr. Hastings just brought his nurse out to our house and his mother was born in the house. Where were you born in? I was born in Shiro. So yeah. was born in Shiro? I was born in Shiro. Uncle Powell was born in Shiro. And your Uncle Lynn, I believe, was born in Anderson. I believe he was born in Anderson. Shiro Anderson, I forget. My Uncle Buddy was born up around my old or somewhere, I think. That's been so many years ago. I did know there's probably there's some records in somewhere. That's about it. I worked at it. What was the first thing you remember? What do you mean the first thing you remember? You ever remember? Well, I remember that uh, uh, I was living at Chiro and uh, moving to Richard. I guess I was uh, about 40 years old. Three, about three and a half, four years old. Young Powell was about two or a little older. That's about all right now.
Well, we was just, me and Powell was out cutting kindling. Pine, that's these pine blocks. I had a little bit of a, I had a little bit of axe, a boy's axe, and he had a great big cane knife. You could, uh, I would square the blocks up for him where he'd only, he'd just have to take that knife and slice the wood up. And so he thought that I had his block. And so he told me to move my hand that he was going to cut it off. And I told him he, he better not. So I put my hand up, stand the wood up like that, and he'd come down, and he did. He cut my finger off. Cut the mushroom loose, and then just, and, uh, so your grandmother, great-grandmother Stover, wrapped a clean cloth around it, and sent me down to Dad's barbershop at Rich's to have the doctor to fix me up. So, the yeah, that's Papa was running the barber. Our great granddaddy uh, running the barber shop then. How did he fix that? Well, he took me to the doctor. The doctor drove me. No, the, yeah, we just lived about a block. Have the doctor to fix me up. So. In the barber shop? Yeah, that's Papa was running the barber. Our great granddaddy. Right in the barber shop then. How did you fix that? Well, he took me to the doctor. The doctor told you me. Some no, they, yeah, we just lived about a block from town. And uh, so the doctor fixed it up for me. Hi, this is me, Ma Stover. Twenty-five. Your daddy? Fifty-two years. Where'd y'all live at? He lived in the house in Jacksonville, Texas. I don't know what street he lived on. Is that where you were born? Yeah, I was born in Jacksonville. In that house? In that house in Jacksonville. What did you have on it? Well, we had uh, little vine, rose vines on it. And we had a little... Uh, what kind of white picket fence around it? It's real cute old house. A little wooden frame there. Have you seen it? Have you seen it? Must have had a rose garden in it because Mother loves to plant flowers. You know, she made flowers grow. Did you see her party too? What's the first thing you When we moved to Tyler, I remember uh, going to King Garden. That's the first thing I remember. What was it like in King Garden? It was a little tiny building that uh, wasn't very far from the grocery store. Granddaddy and my daddy and mother. Was it only one room? It was like a general store. That kind of grocery store, this great big room. Yeah, oh, yeah, room. just one great big room. And all this ages. Ages, just in it. It's real, I remember it was real clean. That place was spotless for clean. And the little children dressed up to go more so than they do now. Really, we dressed up. I remember Mother bought me a lot of clothes to wear. I can remember the little clothes. If she just had one child, and she could put it all on me. What was, uh, was your mom saying at the store? Uh, like pickle bell. Pickle bell. There was a pickle bell there, and cracker bell, and beans, pork and beans. That's the first time I remember seeing pork and beans. 
they were in town. They were van camps, I think. It's not that I believe van camps for the first walking days they ever made. And then uh, crackers were in. They weren't in barrels, the crackers were. The corn mother bought was in tin boxes, like a file case. And the cookies were in that. They were the best things, I believe they did. Coconut macaroons and fruit cookies. And they were great mother didn't have to eat cookies or candy. And she sold baby leaves. And I believe old Henry's was in them. But I remember baby leaves and her she bought. They were too. It was popular then. But she wouldn't know. She said, we should be ready to cry with rotten teeth, uh, decayed teeth, or cry for candy. And I had things that's not easy, so I wanted it, so don't think I did it. Is it and it had strawberries and orange Would and grapes. Was it in bottles? It was in bottles. Bo that bottle has been, that style, that's where the coke started out in that style bottle. You know, kind of lit in the middle, small, and right. yeah, up like that. That's always been the style. But the, I think it was five cents or ten. They weren't so much. I like that stuff all here in the same style, and I do. At all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you ever read any books to you? About ten? Mm hmm. Tell me about one of the stories. I can't remember. It's been so long ago, I haven't looked at one. And uh, Rebecca sang that song. Did all of you sang that song like this? No. Daddy was a young man, uh, even in his age, he was still young, but then, you know, young, youthful. He was very careful. He was a religious man. He believed in God, and he always tried to teach me to believe in God. He, he would read scriptures to me, and uh, when I did something wrong, he would point out to me why that I shouldn't do that, because it was in the Bible that I shouldn't do it. My mother did too. Both of them were good people. They were good people. And I love them very much. What happened when you had that type of food? I uh, was that Russell thing when I had that one season. And you I said, when you got that picture taken? No, I was 14, I believe, when I had that picture taken. But I had just gotten up and I was real thin. How many did you get I had for fever, I believe six weeks. I can remember her saying that I couldn't eat very much for six weeks. So you had it in the 14th? Yeah. No, I mean, I didn't recover from it. It leaves you either guilty or you don't recover. Your stomach deteriorates at that time when you have it. When you have a 104 feet fever, they put ice packs on my head all the time because I had a severe headache. I felt a severe headache. And uh, they wouldn't let you see me, but. Are you catching up with the Yeah, uh -huh, I was on foot. But mother. You were catching cars? No, you misunderstand. I had it. Uh, taken whenever we went to, I was 14, that was a big 10 or 11 test. That was five years ago. You had a couple of years? No, I mean, I was not over it. The point I'm trying to bring, it left me weak. You didn't have it, you don't have it for six years, but it left you weak. Well, weak, uh, that many years. And I don't know that I've ever got out of son. That may be why I get tired for you. That may be what my color is in life. 
I've always been put to death. You know, fragile. Probably that's oh, what comes. They said that they put raw eggs, beat up raw, a raw egg in my butter mouth, and I didn't know it. And then I couldn't want to eat because I needed an egg. Yeah. They beat me up to die there. The crisis was that night, and Dr. Armstrong said, if she doesn't get better tonight, she will be she dies. If she doesn't, uh, you know what a crisis is, you need to live or die. And there was a bunch of people from the church that came and prayed that, that night to stay up with me, and my fever broke that night. I had things in my home. I had yeah, things. It just went away. It's like it took. I was at a birthday party, and uh, this little girl was real. Mary Catherine Bishop was her name. And I told her I had to go home by myself. And she thought I'd eat too much cake. I didn't eat that much cake. But you know what you called it? I must have called it. The doctor said I must have called it from the dressing from the fountain or uh, water for somebody, you know, I drink water. Where I call it? That, that gun is in water. And you get it from drinking. And he said, I must have drank some water and got the gun, but we know that it had water. But he had miraculous. Um, the guy must have meant for me to live. Or he wouldn't have. No, you don't have to be even. No, none of these children are gone. But I believe they're praying. I believe it's I believe it's true. Those volunteers, mother didn't ask to make any of I had a lot of friends in her, but people are like me. I don't know why they do what they do. And I had grown. I was born in hell when my hair came back to the dark brown. I was born in It came back. It came out in hands full. You just reach up and it'd fall out. That fever must have been. They say the big long fever did it. And then it was just a little ring. I had a little, like fairy temple all over my head. You know. It was everybody remarked how pretty it was. They didn't wish they didn't have half on teeth so they didn't have curly hair right now. No, they didn't need a half on teeth with a dress with a spoon. When I got up, I waited that night. You know, it's about. I got a wait now. I don't know how much I was. I forgot what they said. But I was real thin. My arms was real thin. I look like I saw it to death, but it was because it, uh, Dr. Armstrong said if I'd have gotten up and eaten it with penetrated, perforated my stomach, and that's why I couldn't eat. Some people got up and ate at night and still, you know, slip up and eat. They were so hungry. And I must have not, <coughs> I must have known that they got up and ate and I wanted it. And one night time I got delirious. And the thing that I told him to put an ice bag on my nose. Mother said, that the ice bag talk out of my head. And I said, please put an ice bag on my nose. And she knew I was delirious. You're supposed to put it on my head. She probably wasn't. Eyelashes on his eyes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And 
right now he's just so cute. And he's just such a cute baby. Getting the pizza came along. And Papa would take care of Tommy and I'd take care of the kids. And then pretty soon Daisy came along and he was a family. Well, I had to take care of him. The kids and Daisy and Tommy all. And then your mother came along and walked her hands to her. And I'd take care of her. And then nine years later, Tommy came along. And I had, they were all fed then. They could let me go to a time talk. And then a year and three months later, Paul came. And your mother and the teachers let me raise the Tommy and Paul. That's why they're supposed to die. They feel responsible for them because they get raised. But they, we always had plenty to eat and plenty of clothes to wear, but we weren't dead. But we never did start and, and I always kept them clean. No, no what do you mean the baby? No, I mean the clothes. Oh, TNT soap. What was it? It was a big old bar of soap about that big. It's still in store. Are you going to play it back? Let me hear how it's going. You mean I'm going to do some more? Well, let me hear what I said first or give me the idea. Would you let me hear what I said in the beginning? <laughs> Please. Okay. Well, what happened to Is it so? What do you want to do Lasso. Lasso and Ivy. Not Lasso? No. You didn't make your own soap? I didn't make my own soap. Sometimes Mother gave me for me. She made it. Mother made it. My mother made it. She put it in a pot of black uh, I put it in a of clothes and put grease and lye. I can't remember the other thing. Please make the soap stick together and clean the clothes. I don't know why I make this. She used to say that grease and the bacon dressing. But we put perfume, mother put the gardenia perfume and taste, you know, in the soap and it smells a lot. Is that right? Yeah, are you kidding me? You just want to hear it? You, 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 you. Doctor, he gave me something. Did you mow away with 
projecting in the sky. I didn't do my best on that topic. I was unexpected. I was unexpected. I don't know anything to say, darling. You ain't blessed that stuff. Who must you be for? Who must that back in the Not that I don't want to do what you want to, but I just, I want to relax the thing and let you tell me. <laughs> I do. Yeah, well, could be. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Have you got that on? Can I hear it?
he died older, about 1925, 26, somewhere like that. And Dad ran the market for about four or five years. I want to run the market at the cafe. And he had me in farming. He had a team of horses, a team of mules. Enough farm equipment to farm a couple hundred acres of land, but Lynn and I, he ran 25 acres of land, and we, we farmed that. And then I worked in the mercantile store, drove a truck.
very close as long as he is, but I never did. Never did take the time to learn it. And so you don't need you. How do you say echo three dots? Three dots. Uh, no, three dots. And uh, two dots. Three dots. You say O is, uh, it's, uh, S three dots, O two dots, S is three dots. The, uh, the last I started in twice to learn the last end, learn the station age to be a station agent. Uh, the third time I started in, well, I'm not finished up. And in 1931, I went to Cotton Corps, Texas. Went to work for the railroad. What would you see lots of all the time ago? Well, the, when I was down here, where old as it is now, there wasn't the thing there that, that's the garage that I worked in, the Metlow Garage. It was a, used to be the old city order farm. Opera house. About 20, 19, 28, and 9, somewhere along there. I don't remember just when, but in somewhere along that time, and uh, I, uh, there was a federal land bank right there on Lamar, across from uh, Lamar and Main, right across from the Lamar Hotel. And then there was the old Metlo garage, that was the old city yard time where we had the garage. And then Western Auto had a little Western Auto store, some other little store there. And that was in, on Dallas in Maine. What's that auto in Where Spoldis is right now, where their front door comes out in Maine. Well, it was an old city auditorium. The city had quit using it, and they was, uh, I don't know whether someone had bought it or what. Anyway, we had a garage, parking lot garage. Huh? Right by it? No, in the building. Huh. It still had all the old balconies, uh, the old balconies and all up there. In the dressing room and where the and the lights and everything. All they did was just tear the, the bottom part out of it where they could park a, a car. In there. And the uh, umbo, old Umbo building was quite, there wasn't anything beyond that other than, that I can remember, other than Rice Institute and uh, the Warwick Hotel, they were out in the country. At that time, I was parking in the end of Main Street as far as the business was concerned. And uh, it wasn't, I could walk from there out to the other end of, of uh, across the North Main Bottom. Out there, I used to go out there one time I was down here. I went out there every day for a week trying to get on working for the Gulf for all time. And I would I'd have maybe a dime in the morning and uh, I'd have to make my choice between drinking a cup of coffee and eating a hot dog, eating a donut or and walking out there or riding the street cars do it up my breakfast, so I didn't wind up eating and then walking. It took about, uh, I guess, 25, I made 30 minutes walking and walk back. A lot of good exercise. Get a cup of coffee, donuts for a dime. They were bread, big donuts, big cups. 
me and my grandmother and uh, her mother. And Why not get married? Huh? Why not get married? Well, we were going to get married at, at Malone. And uh, in those days and times, the roads weren't very good. It began to rain the uh, first of the week. And it rained all the week, and we just couldn't get to Malone. So uh, the preacher by the name of Hayden Edwards, the Methodist preacher, was going to marry us. And uh, so when that rained all that time, well, we just went to... Brother Rocket, see that was your mother's, your grandmother's uh, okay. Hubbard, Hubbard Texas. Okay. At that time it was called Hubbard City, Texas, and they finally changed it to, to Hubbard Texas. Who was off the way? Just your grandmother and I and uh, her mother and the preacher and his wife and two boys. Well, they were the preacher's boys. I don't know. I forget the name. Man. They were about your size. One of them. One of them was about Russell's size. And, uh, and that thirteen. Huh? One of them was my age. That thirteen. Ah, uh, that just took like that. He wasn't any older than that. If he might have not been that old, I don't know. But. uh and we live in, and I worked the rest of the year, and I cut my job off. And I cut some more jobs off. I didn't, that threw me without any place to go on the railroad. So I finally got to talk to the superintendent and to let me work out on the section. Got that on the track. And then the shovel and pick and the mall and driving the spikes and putting in tires. And I did that three days a week for, oh, I guess, let's see, $2.28 cents a day. For the hard work? Yeah, for the hard labor. And then, uh, I went after following a wheat burner all one day from Hillsburg to Hubbard. Uh, after I'd worked out there for a whole couple of months, I guess. I come by the depot one afternoon and I had a message. I tell them to go to the railroad and relieve the agent over there. So I never did. From then on, I never did um, have to go back on the track anymore. And I got laid, I got through with the extra work. And I went uh, to work for the Elmo Pipeline Company. Worked uh, one Christmas. <clears throat> Worked about seven days down at Gold Bay, and then they that was all the work they had for me, and the railroad still didn't have any work. Why did you so, want the railroad? Huh? Why did you want to work the railroad? It was uh, very interesting then, at that time. Why? I don't know. It looked like uh, at least uh, probably have a future in it. It looked rather promising at that time. I want to work. The other boy called me at I see I went to work with this again for them and uh, I believe Friday, March the thirteenth, nineteen and thirty six. Friday the thirteenth? Yeah. Uh, they sent me over to Natchez, Texas, that's between Jacksonville and Palestine. Sent me over there for, uh, well, uh, two days 
work is what they set me over that far, but then the uh, superintendent told the chief over there to work me as long as he could. So I worked there six months and 19 days, and they was fixing to transfer me up into the Longview district. Meantime, the railroad, I had to either come back to the railroad or give up my seniority. So I come back to the railroad and went to Singleton. I went to work. That's what seniority? That's your time accumulated years. Accumulated. If you went to work like today, and I went to work tomorrow, you would have a one day seniority on me. So I get the job? Yeah, if you, any job that come open, if you wanted, you'd have the right to the job before I would. But that's, uh, that's why the work done. And then I went on the walk to Hatchet, and I moved to Tig, in, fe in uh, February, 1943, and uh, started to dis promoted to a dispatcher in 1946, and worked there on January the 23rd, 1969. I mean, uh, yeah, 69, and they transferred me to to Fort Worth. I worked there until June the 1st, 1976. Quit. Retired. And that's it. What about all your kids? All of my kids. So how old were born? Well, Tommy was born in the section house at uh, his husband. Her, his granddaddy Luker, his great granddaddy Luker, was a section farmer. He was a section guy. And he lived in the section house there when he was living there when Tommy was born. On, on uh, October the 29th, 1933. And then uh, when. Uh, Patricia, Aunt Patricia was born. She was born in January, uh, January the 10th, 1936. They had bought them a place, moved out of the section house, and then uh, uh, your Uncle David was born at Singleton, Texas. February the 27th, 1939, and your mother was born at Walker Hatchet, Texas, September the 8th, 1942. And, uh, and Aunt Connie was born uh, May the 12th, 1940. Fifty one. Uncle Paul was born August the second, nineteen fifty two. A T. Both of those were born a T. They were the only ones but I chose was born in the hospital. Hi. Paul, Connie, and Paul. And uh, your mother would have been born in the hospital of Walk Hatchy, but the doctor that was uh, supposed to be there, he was on vacation. And the doctor that, uh, that, that delivered your mother was, uh, we couldn't get in the hospital. They had people stand down in the hall in the hospital. And, what was his name? Dr. Hastings. Dr. Jenkins was the one that was supposed to be in there, and he, was, he said he would make arrangements 
at the hospital and all when your mother was due. But he was on vacation and he hadn't told uh, Dr. Hastings. He told he had one or two other people that were expecting babies. That they were expecting them. They had, he'd already told them about them, but your mother, they wasn't ex he wasn't expecting her, and she was the only one who was born while he was on vacation. Dr. Hastings just brought his nurse out to our house.